I'm going to talk a little bit about these large squamata juniper that I have on the nursery. I have done a video about squamata on a previous occasion. You remember I did one which was over six feet tall and I presented it to one of my YouTube fans because he gave me a metal sculpture. So in return for that, I have given him one of these trees which I created myself. The history of these trees, look at them. They have all got beautiful trunks. The trunks here must be at least six inches across at the base. And all this beautiful flaky bark. And as you know, junipers always have this bark. And when the bark peels, it shows that the bark is expanding. This is how they keep growing, you know. As they grow, they shed the old bark. So like all junipers, you've got to keep cleaning the bark. But this is not the object of this exercise today. I'm just pointing out that this is how they grow. As they grow, they shed the old bark. So this is juniper. It's almost like cinnamon, isn't it? Cinnamon bark. Those of you who are in the tropics, so this is how junipers grow. Now, these junipers, I have only brought four here. I have about 50 of them. And when I came to the nursery in 1986, in January 86, I planted about maybe a hundred of them and they were no thicker than this, no thicker than my finger. So after 36 or 37 years, growing successively in the ground and then in pots, I keep digging it up, putting in pots, and this is the size they have got to. I have pruned them in several places. You will see where the cuts have been made, like look at this one. This was the leader, I cut it off and then a new leader grew. I cut some of the main branches, I cut another cut there. So cut and grow, I've got all these twists and bends just by cutting it. So you must be wondering why I just leave them like this. I leave them mainly because I want the trunks to thicken. And I also leave the thick branches because even if they die, we can use them for making driftwood. But while they are growing, the general care I give to them is just pruning the tips of the shoots off. By pruning the tips of the shoots off, I get them to bud back. So budding back is again a very long and tedious process, but it is possible. It's just that I haven't been concentrating on these trees for a while, but as I always say, as long as the trees are not dead, they continue to live and they will eventually get used as bonsai at some stage. They also bud back from the old wood. Other things I can do with it, as with all junipers, you can air layer them and get shorter trees. I will explain to you how we approach this. So the general care again, you see these long straggly shoots, all this has grown in the last year. So if I don't want it to get too long, I cut some of it back and I will get short internodes or short shoots growing. So all these long spiky bits, you should go around and cut it back and you will get the plant to force new shoots from much lower down on the trunk. So all these long shoots should be tipped, leaving some green of course. Always leave a bit of green. So this doesn't just apply to scone water, it applies to all other junipers, whether it's the Chinese juniper, you know, the Itoi Gawas, the lot, they all have to have this treatment of budding back by tipping the shoots. So you see, I cut it there and so it's bud back here. So these all become potential gin material. That's alive there, it can be forced back. So this one has got green there, I can cut it back there. This one I'll leave some green so I cut there. This long shoot there's got some green there so I can cut that. I can cut that like that. If you simply went around and tidied the whole tree up, it begins to look like new. For many of you, if you look at a tree like this with so many branches, 
you begin to get worried. What do you do with it, you know? But when you find a complicated tree like this, you should be very happy because it means that you have a lot of choice. The more branches you have, the more complicated the tree, the more choices you have to do various things with it. So look at it on the positive side. Never look on the negative side. So I'm going to deal with each of these trees in turn. I'm going to take it into the back greenhouse and show you what we do with each of these. So this is one potential one. This is another potential tree. So all these trees have got enormous potential. Every single tree has potential. This is going to be a very long video, but don't despair. So, before I take it into the greenhouse, let me do all the, what we call dirty work. That means tidying up the tree while I'm out here. I don't want to drag all that rubbish in there. So this long shoot, look at it, it's about almost three foot long. I have to prune it back, I prune it back there. So it has some green and to rebut further back. Like this, I leave a bit of green, I cut, cut this back. So all these long shoots, I don't need it that long. Some of you must be asking, why don't you do it all the time while they're growing? The trouble is I've got thousands of trees. I don't have time to do all of them. But as I say, while they're growing, it's good. It's getting nourishment. The trunks are getting thicker. So I don't let these things worry me too much. Let nature take its course. And when we are ready, we have the uh, plant material, raw material. I don't like to mention collecting from the wild. What happens in nature when the trees are growing in the wild? They're just growing. You don't worry too much about them. At the right time, they can be dealt with. So all I'm doing at the moment is cutting these long shoots back so that in the future I can get more uh, new shoots growing, new juvenile shoots and young shoots growing. So I'm just clearing the debris before I go into the greenhouse. Almost every tree here has potential. And bear in mind, I have another 50 trees in the field like this, which were grown from young. And they will all be potential bonsai. I have sold a lot of these trees to especially the club enthusiasts in the past. In the past, when I talk of the past, we're talking of the 1980s probably. Juniper squamata was a very, very popular tree. I remember the days when the Federation of British Bonsai Societies, Forbes, was formed. They ran a competition to make trees or bonsai that resemble the Federation's logo. And the Squamata juniper was certainly one of those very popular species for using to make the FOBS logo. So I sold a lot of trees to club people for next to nothing because they weren't as large as this then. They were only about half the height and the trunks were only like one or two inch thick. Yeah, they're now four or six inches thick. So those were the days we used to sell a lot of these trees because they were very popular with club people. They were cheap trees didn't cost a lot to buy and junipers are very tough trees but for some reason maybe because of the blue color and also because the squamata has this bad habit of having a lot of dye back in the middle of the tree you see I'm spending so much time just cleaning the old dead foliage out this is the nature of the juniper you just got to accept it that certain trees behave in a certain way Again, it's like us human beings, you know, it's like hair. You have to keep trimming the hair, so you have to keep trimming it to keep yourself looking smart. So this is what happens with these trees as well. You can't just leave them to their own devices and hope that they will look nice at every single moment of its life. There are times when they look a bit ragged and then a little bit of grooming will smarten them up. 
So again, some more long shoots. Let's deal with these before we take it into the greenhouse. The more I look at this tree while I'm pruning, I'm not just pruning for the sake of pruning. I'm observing everything that is going on. I'm observing how the branches twist and turn. And what's going through my mind is, what can I do with it? See, I'm thinking aloud. I'm saying, now that looks interesting. This looks interesting. So what, what can I do with this part of the tree, that part of the tree? So I'm thinking all the time. I've mentioned before that when you have raw material, you should look at it for a long time. What I normally do on the nursery, when I get interesting plants, and they're about to be worked on or used for demonstration. I leave them in a prominent place. So every time I walk past the tree, I say to myself, what am I going to do with it? Shall I do this? Shall I do that? So the thought process is going through my mind all the time. So they're not just standing there for nothing. I'm looking at it every time I pass because I'm assessing the tree to see what can be done with the tree. So. All the other three trees are equally interesting. I'm going to probably look at those eventually over a period of time. But I will look at each of them because the more I look, the more I see. So let's shut the camera off and I'm going to take this tree into the back greenhouse and I'm going to work on this particular one. We won't deal with the other three at the moment. We will go and look at the uh, main tree which is this one to see what we can get out of it okay i thought i'd show you the one i was referring to this is the tree i did for uh, this youtube fan he hasn't collected it but i've gifted it to him and you see how bushy this tree is it wasn't like this to begin with but you see the growth that has emerged this is a new shoot that has only grown in the last year 15 or 18 inches long this is a new shoot that has grown again. So they do bud back and they become luxurious like this. So don't despair. What you see uh, I'm going to work on now will become like this in just a year. So this is after only like a year's work and you see how dense it has become. So this is Squamata for you. And while you're here, let me show you. These are the Itoigawas. These come from Japan like this another juniper but we're going to earlier the top that'll be a subject for another day i always like to show you what is going on so let's go back in the nursery and we will analyze this big squamata to show you my thought process i found over the years that most people find it very helpful when i think aloud and just tell you what is going through my mind. So let us look at this tree with the white background so you can see in detail what we are talking about. And I'll maybe take you further back. So this is a tree. I would say it is, on, I know it's on a turntable 18 inches. It would be at least four foot six. That means 1.5 meter tall. We may not need all the height. What I look for, first of all, to see the movement of the tree. Squamata, by its very nature, tends to be a very straight growing tree. Most people use squamatas for formal upright tree, bolt upright because you can't bend the trunk. But because I've done selective pruning over the years, I've created these bends just by doing cut and grow. Normally, the squamata doesn't grow and make twists like this. But by cutting them in the appropriate places, I've managed to force this twisty and turny effect on this tree. So on this tree, this part is straight, but you have a lovely bend here. Then you have a lovely bend here. And if I turn the tree round, I think if you come from this side, you have the white background, you can see the tree better. Now, this is also interesting. How interesting is that? That is ever so interesting. Ever so interesting. So, this gives you a lot of choice, but it also creates dilemmas for you. When you are faced with so many things to choose from, what do you choose? Choosing the options is probably the most difficult thing. 
I've said already on one or two occasions before, in life, some of the most difficult things is knowing what to do. So we say that there are two things which are bad or people fail to do. They do a lot of thinking, but they never act. So just thinking and not acting is bad. But very often, I think the more common thing people do is they act without thinking. And too often I've had emails and messages directed to me saying, I followed your instruction, I cut everything off, I ended up with nothing. So that is also bad. So what probably they did was they acted without thinking. So before you act, you should think as well. So these are the two things you need to avoid. Just thinking and thinking and not acting is bad. But also if you act without thinking, that is also very bad. So while I'm tinkering with this tree, tidying it up, I'm thinking, thinking, what should I do with this tree? So the thought process is going through my mind. And let me see if you can read my thoughts, because many of you watching my YouTube videos have grown accustomed to me. So I think you know exactly what I think. I'm not going to cut any branches that have green tips on them because I know I can wire them into usable branches. So let us look at the tree for the trunk line or the movement of the tree. So as I said, normally squamatas don't have movement, but I have been able to create these odd bits of movement simply by pruning over the years. So that's very interesting. So should I want to, I can make a short tree. Let me bring the famous white bag to perform the bag trick. So, if I didn't want the tree to be too big, I can make it into a short tree. So if I wanted a short bonsai, I can keep the tree just this high, just this high and perhaps gin the top. That would be quite dramatic because that's going to be dramatic. That could be gin. And these could be probably bent down or something done to them. So that is one option. Before I go too far, looking at the nibari or the base is also a very important part of the process of creating bonsai because the base of the nibari very often determines the front or the back of the tree. Looking at this tree, this is a distressed feature. For some reason, it got split there. And that split has made it look really interesting. Look at that split. And it spreads either way. Powerful roots going into the ground. So this makes it a very nice potential front. So if I were to make a short tree, this is what I would end up with. Nice short tree. But... If I wanted to do something else, what else could I do? This tree has got movement further up the tree as well. And if you look at the tree at the top here, there's another movement there and another movement there. So that is also possible. Lovely thick trunk, maybe take that off, show more of the trunk. So we could have Tremendous drama going that way. Let's see what it is like on the other side. This is it from the other side. You've got this movement, you've got that movement. And you've got a bit of shari there. So that is also possible. So remember that although it may not have back budding 
from what I showed you of the tree I did a year ago, you see how well it back budded. I'm confident that it will bud back very easily. So I've got the possibility of using this as the front as well. I can use this as the front. So this is going to be very dramatic. So we are faced with so many, many choices. The other choice too is if you were a bit timorous or not so bold and daring, you could even earlier the tree over here. If you earlier it here, you get a short bonsai with this movement, this movement. Or you could earlier from here and you will get this movement. Earlier this and you can get that. So there's so many possibilities. There are two earlying possibilities straight away. So what a lot of choice we are faced with. So I really do not know what to do. And this is where I'm thinking aloud because the options are so tremendous that I don't want to just show off and do something silly just to show how clever I am. I think I will have to think carefully before I do anything. So now the crunch time and I've only spent like 15 or 20 minutes but I still have to take a decision. I can't dither forever. So the first choice, as I explained a bit earlier, was this short option. That means the tree is only like 60 centimeter with this dramatic twist here to make this the leader. And this tree would just end up this high. So that is one option, very credible option. And this can fill out very quickly in about a year and I'll get a nice short tree. If I didn't use this option, what else do I have? I then have these two dramatic twists here. Beautiful lines, this twist and this twist. I've got these two twists. So the options for these, as I said, would be to possibly early these back ones. Can you imagine how interesting I would get from these two trees, twisty trees, air it as short tree. But who wants short trees? We have short trees by the hundred, thousands over here. I think a large tree is always dramatic. So knowing Peter Chan, he loves his big trees. So I think I will go for the large option. Large option means I'm going to keep virtually everything. Keep everything. So I'm going to have a little pad here Another pad from that dramatic part there. And then yet another pad there. So let us see how we go about doing that. Right. So let us take the obvious unwanted branches out. That gin is going to be too long. This could possibly be used. This could be used. Okay. There are certain things that don't need to be used. This would end up as a gin. So while I'm thinking of the next step, I've done a bit of gin just to give me thinking time. Now this one crossing the trunk here, if I'm to keep this at the front, I've more or less decided this is going to be the front. Mainly, not mainly, because this is a very nice feature. I want to emphasize that. So I'll keep this as the front. This could possibly be used as well. Now this is crossing the trunk there. So do I need it? Not really. I don't think I need it. So I will probably make a gin feature with that one. This is the scary part. Once you cut it off, you can't put it back. And tidy that thing up in a more. If you have a problem, cut it off. This is a famous saying from the 70s and 80s. Maybe because it was possibly also John Marcus say, if I remember right. If you have a problem, cut it off. 
And if you've cut it off, you've still got a problem, then you've got really a big problem. Okay. So that is that song. So this is going to be a small tree in its own right. I'm analyzing every step of the way. What can be used, what can't be used. That will end up as gin. Now this is going to be a nice little head over here. It's a bit long. Bite the bullet, as they say. We'll end up making gin from that. Pity I don't drink, because when you keep talking about gins, I'm the last person to drink gin. I've never drunk gin in my life. I don't drink spirits. Every time I tinker with making these little gins, I'm not just wasting time, I'm thinking. All the time thinking. Okay, so this is going to be one pad as it were, one head. That crossing bunch can go to the back like that. So this is going to be a tree in its own right. A lot of gins there. Lot of gins there. Full of gins. Too many gins, in fact. But at some point, we may have to bite more bullets. There's too much going on. That one, I don't think we need. This is serious stuff. I'm going to just shorten the branch, but I will make gin from it. And then the back. I'm just cutting it short because I can make gins. If I don't want gin, I can then remove it completely at the later stage. Let's assess what we've done so far. I'm going to have a lot of fun waiting to see during the next year how it will get new shoots, new foliage. But knowing this species, I know I will get it very quickly, like that big tree I showed you. Within a space of just a year or 18 months, I've got all that new foliage going. So I've more or less rationalized the tree. So the plan is to make a feature here with this tree, this part, another one, this part, and then a head forming the third part. So the rest is really just wiring the tree. A lot of wiring to do.
So the next stage will be wiring. We we'll stop for one. So I'm just going to start a bit of wiring. I'm not going to show you each and every bit of wire I do because there is a practical limit on the time of each of these videos. I know many of you say you don't mind watching videos which are R and are more longer, but I don't think that applies to everyone. So just to be practical, we got to be sensible and only film the essential parts. All I'm doing is wiring the branches to get a conical shape. The branches are quite flexible and provided you don't do crazy things, they shouldn't snap on you. Visitors. The bark always fascinates me. So I'm just wiring everything so that it comes down. Again, you just got to be sensible with the choice of wire I'm using here. This is, I would say, two and a half mil, and that was three mil. But it's only a rough guide because different species and different ages of trees have different flexibility. So you just got to judge. Once you keep doing more and more wiring, the more experience you will get as to what grade of wire to use. So you can see how I'm creating a conical shape. I'm going to do a conical shape with all these branches, all these branches. Okay, I'll stop videoing for a while. Let me show you what I've done so far. I've been wiring this little tree on this side first. So they're going to be like three bonsai in one, three in one. So this is going to be a bonsai in its own right, all wired down. I'm not sure about that, I may take that off. Probably don't need that. So this is going to be the look of this part of the tree. So that's one part. And then there will be two more little trees on the other part. I may even work on I don't need this. What I want to show you is bud back. I mentioned a moment ago that these trees may, they may look a bit bare here, but they do bud back. If you come close with the camera, let me show you these little buds here. Can you see these little green buds? They are shoots that are growing even without me heading back the tip of the shoot. And on this branch here, look at all these new shoots here. So, don't despair, you will get a lot of new growth if you be patient and simply by cutting the ends of the shoots, you will get a lot of this bud back growing. So a lot of people say, oh, I can't get these plants to bud back, but junipers do bud back. And this variety, which most people think don't bud back, do bud back very easily. When you wire any 
odd little stubs if you clean them up makes the wiring simpler usually trees of this size can take you days if not a complete week to do but knowing me i'll probably work on it fairly quickly a lot of branches are in the wrong place okay i've done that much i'm now going to wire the other side wiring for the last 15 minutes or so Once you've made your mind up as to what to do, the rest comes easy because you have a objective or plan in mind. So the rest is just executing the plan and, and just making adjustments as you go along. I always remind people that when you do bonsai, it's not a race against time, but because I am naturally a fast worker, I will probably maybe spend half a day more on this tree, and I should be able to see the results. I will be doing some carving. I will have to dig out my own carving tools, my router and other machines, and do some rough carving. So I'm still trying to create a rough conical shape. Surprisingly easy to bend these branches without cracking or breaking. So I'm going to use this as the apex and make a cone out of this part. So all this is detail wiring I will tackle in due course to make a cone out of this part. Many of these distracting branches I will have to decide whether to get rid of them or not because then there will be another cone at the top. So there's one cone here, another cone there. These I will leave for now in case I decide to use it won't rush to cut it off so you can see this is going to be a large natural tree the sort of trees that you find growing in nature maybe even in i've never been to yellowstone national park but i would get some of these great big sequoias resemble this type of image that i'm trying to create tall stately trees not a thick squat one but tall elegant tree with a lot of pads and foliage and we will see how it goes from there. Just a remark, we were taking some of the bark off. So where there's a contrast with the old bark and the new bark, that's quite an interesting feature. So that's something to bear in mind. All these little stubs will either be removed or we can make little interesting gins out of them. So watch this space and I have here Adam, who has come all the way from Northern Ireland. Derry, Northern Ireland. I showed him on the workshop video. So he's been my cameraman today. So, and he's hopefully been observing what I do. So what are your impressions? Oh, you it's know? great so far. I really like this species to work on. Yeah. Um, look at this beautiful bark on it. Okay. You don't get a chance to work on big trees no, like not, this? Not very often. More 
Okay. Shohan Size Trees. All right. Say something about your bonsai journey. Uh, so I started bonsai at the beginning of lockdown when I had really nothing to do. I was stuck in the house, but there had been a few garden centers open at the time. And for my birthday, I got given a, it was a sweet plum bonsai tree, oh. which had died uh, because the soil it was in was yes. very, very compact and composty. And then I started watching Peter's videos and I was able to learn from there and learn different techniques of working on certain species. And I suppose a lot of people... You, you've been here once before, haven't you? Yeah, I've been it? here... Twice? Yeah, twice. This is my second time here now. Okay. So last time I was here, I was over filming for a bonsai documentary. Yes. That Peter was okay. in. And uh, you, did you see it? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so that's on YouTube at the moment. Oh. And I think a lot of people's first trees die. And to, get, to do bonsai, you shouldn't give up after your first tree dies. <laughs> so your tree is still there? No, that... The sweet plums. Dead. Okay. But that was half dead anyway. Yeah, that was really Okay. Dead. So you're really serious about bonsai. You yeah. want to do a little business as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you, Peter. Yes, I wish you all the best. All right. All okay, right. thanks for Thank filming you. today.